These are four shots of espresso. What would happen if I drank all of them on an empty stomach? I mean, what effects would the caffeine have on my body? Well, I say that we can give it a shot and see what happens. So, as we wait for the effects to kick in, what's going on in my body now that I have downed four cups of coffee? The caffeine in the coffee passes through the stomach and then reaches the intestines, where it is absorbed and released into the bloodstream in approximately 15 to 30 minutes. Clearly, it depends on whether you have an empty stomach or not. Presumably on an empty stomach, it hits your system faster. So in my case, in about 15 to 20 minutes, I should begin to feel the first effects. Now, when the substance enters the bloodstream, we can say that it is literally distributed throughout the whole range of bodily fluids, from blood plasma to saliva, even reaching the breast milk and the placenta. In fact, since it's especially lipophilic, meaning that it mixes well with fats, the caffeine molecule can cross pretty much all body membranes with ease. So it can even get past the barrier that protects our brain, the blood-brain barrier, and enter the brain. And this is where the caffeine exerts its psychotropic effects. Let's remember, caffeine is indeed a psychoactive substance, meaning that it affects the brain and is considered the most used drug in the world. It's called a drug simply because, you know, it has an impact on the brain. Once in the brain, the caffeine is surrounded by a sea of neurons, which have countless receptors, so lots of little docking stations, we might say. What does the caffeine molecule do? Literally, it goes and steals the spot from adenosine, you know, the tiredness molecule, if we can call it that. It literally binds to the receptors that were reserved for adenosine. If we're getting technical, from a scientific standpoint, we can say that the caffeine acts as a competitive antagonist at the adenosine receptors. So, when the caffeine molecule is attached to the receptor instead of the adenosine, feelings of sleepiness decrease or can even disappear completely, resulting in a more alert state of mind. That is the reason why having caffeine can delay the onset of sleep. Have you got that? Is caffeine only found in coffee or are there other foods that contain it as well? Yes, there are many of other foods, lots of other drinks that have caffeine in them. And now we'll go through the list, starting from the one that's got the least. In seventh position, we have milk chocolate containing three milligrams of caffeine per serving. Dark chocolate takes sixth place with an average of seven milligrams of caffeine per portion. The higher caffeine content is due to the greater amount of cocoa in dark chocolate compared to other types of chocolate. In fifth spot, we have cola with 33 milligrams of caffeine in one. I'm starting to feel a little agitated and I have a slight burning sensation in my stomach, heartburn. Also because adenosine stimulates gastric acid production. In fact, people who suffer from heartburn can't drink much coffee precisely for this reason. Actually, I'm starting to feel a bit of heartburn. In fourth place, we have black tea with 50 milligrams of caffeine in a 220 milliliter cup. Sharing second position, we have 60 milliliters of espresso coffee, like the espressos I just had, and a 220 milliliter can of energy drink, both of which contain a total of 80 milligrams of caffeine. And in first place, we've got American coffee with 90 milligrams of caffeine in 200 milliliters. So, by knocking back four espressos, I'll have taken about 80 times four milligrams. So 320 milligrams of caffeine and 320 milligrams of caffeine is no small amount. Just so you're aware, the European Food Safety Authority explicitly states in its guidelines that it is considered safe for the general adult population, with the exception of pregnant women, to consume over the course of the day, so not all at once. A maximum of 400 milligrams of caffeine. I took 320 milligrams, so I am under the limit. But the thing is I took it all at once, and that can lead to side effects. In fact, consuming more than 300 milligrams of caffeine in a single dose can be regarded as a full-fledged caffeine overdose. Right now, I'm overdosing on caffeine. The symptoms of caffeine intoxication include restlessness, jitteriness, excitement, insomnia, and a flushed face. Am I red in the face? Gastrointestinal issues, for sure. I've got a pretty upset stomach, a chaotic flow of thoughts and words. All right, yes, that makes sense, irritability, arrhythmia, rapid heartbeat, and muscle tremors.
And usually, I've got a super steady hand. I mean, this shaking might seem normal to someone else, but my hands never usually shake. Clearly, all these side effects are simply due to the fact that I consumed four coffees at the same time. If I had drunk, perhaps one for breakfast, one mid-morning, one after lunch, and one in the afternoon, I wouldn't be feeling like this. So, as always, it is the dose that makes the poison. Too much caffeine all at once is not good. So we would never drink four coffees, but that seems pretty obvious. We should be aware, though, that throughout the day it's best not to exceed five cups of coffee. In fact, consuming more than five cups of coffee per day for an extended period, such as six or seven cups daily for five years, may result in certain long-term consequences, particularly concerning your cardiovascular health, so affecting your heart, and particularly for women who are pregnant. Consuming too much caffeine could potentially impede fetal development. Here's what the European Food Safety Authority recommends: for an adult, up to 400 milligrams a day, so about five cups of coffee, won't cause any problems. For pregnant women, no more than 200 milligrams of caffeine. So for expectant moms, that's two cups of coffee a day max, or a coffee and a tea, or an energy drink and a coffee. Basically, whatever combination you like. And as long as you don't go over 200 milligrams, it won't cause any issues for the baby. For kids, though, it's no more than three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. So if your son or daughter weighs about 30 kilograms, 30 times three is 90. So no more than 90 milligrams a day, which is one coffee or two cokes. Approximately two hours have passed, and the impact has largely diminished. All the fatigue from this morning is affecting me once again, especially since I didn't get enough sleep. My hands are no longer trembling, and I'm calm and relaxed. Therefore, I suppose you could say that I have naturally metabolized the excessive amount of caffeine, and now I simply want to fall asleep because all that adenosine has suddenly overwhelmed my brain. So I am experiencing the tiredness that I didn't feel before. All right, folks. So with this video, we wanted to show you a bit about the effects of caffeine on our bodies, on the human body, at a biochemical level, as well as from a physiological and physical perspective. Thanks so much for watching this video, and as always, see you again soon, right here on Geopop Everyday Science. Until next time, bye.